we are going to create a contingency table using Microsoft Excel. When we are doing probabilities, sometimes we need to create contingency tables in which we convert our raw scores into proportions so that we can make some inferences about the outcomes that we find with our distribution. So let me tackle that using Microsoft Excel. For this example, I'm going to be using the Probability Week 8 Excel spreadsheet. It's available in class and through a link in the description for this video. Let me show you the tab that we'll be working on. We're going to use the Contingency Table tab, which is the second tab. If you'd like to see what this will ultimately look like, you can click on the Secondary tab. And you'll see where all the answers will appear. Let's go back to the Contingency Table tab, and I think it would be nice to enlarge this so we can see it even better. Looks good. So what you'll notice is that we have two tables. Typically, what you will start with is this table here at the top. You will have a cross-tabulation of variables with counts in the cells in the middle. So here we have some pets. Uh, these pets are sometimes show quality and others are pet quality versus male and female pets. So this is information that we got from a veterinary office. Now obviously there's going to be more pet quality pets than there will be show quality pets. The male and female division is probably going to be pretty close to equal, but we're going to find that out as we look at these tables. What you need to know though is when we create this contingency table, the best way to do this is to start by creating a secondary table below the one that has the raw data, and that is where we're going to put our proportions. Let me show you how. All of the raw data are contained in these cells. We want to create proportions in these cells down here. But to do that, we're going to need to have something to divide by. In fact, we're going to need column totals and row totals and a grand total. Let's start by creating these column totals. In cell E5, we're going to add up everything in this column. So we'll use the formula, equal sign, SUM, open parentheses. And I'll just drag to capture the two variables that I'm going to need, two values that I'll need. And they add up to 11. I can drag this one to the right to complete the column totals. For the row totals, I'm going to use the same idea, equal sign, SUM, and capture these two and drag that one down. And for the grand total, I could either summarize the column totals, rather the, these are the column totals, or these are the row totals, but I like to get all of the values, and Excel will let me capture the entire array of values. That way, I am not reliant upon either the column or row totals, just in case the math was off somewhere. It just allows me to double check. Also, I'll mention that these values in this, uh, in this column, which are the row totals, uh, as well as these, are called the marginal totals. If we're using a different type of table, we'll sometimes call marginal means. So when you hear that word marginal, it's referring to the margins of the table, and it's talking about summarizations or evaluations that have been done on the raw data. So here's our data points. These might be counts. Here's our marginal counts or our marginal totals. Now you'll see what I've done is created a secondary table below the original contingency table. This is where we're going to create those proportions. Now the proportions are going to be the raw number of values divided by the grand total. In this case, I also want my proportions to be rounded to two decimals. So let me either teach you or remind you of two techniques that we can use to get our output to look exactly like we want. Uh, let's start by creating the proportions. The proportions are going to go in these light blue boxes. So let me just start right here in this cell C9. And I'm going to use that to create a proportion based on this number, number 6, which is in cell C3. So I'll put my cursor right there in C9, and I'm going to use this formula equal sign, click on the number that I want, so that's 6. I'm going to divide it by the grand total. However, I want to anchor or create an absolute reference for this grand total. There's two ways of doing this, depending on whether you're using a Mac 
or a PC. On PC, your value or the key you want is F4. On my Mac, I'm going to use Command T. So I type Command T, and you'll see the dollar signs, which indicate that these values or this cell has been anchored or created an absolute reference where even if I drag this formula around, the denominator will always be the value in E5. There we go. Now there's another thing that I want to do with this, and this is to make sure that I always have two decimals. Uh, in this case, I already have the two decimals, but often you will not. So let me show you how I can always assure that I have two decimals. I'm going to use another formula, and I'm going to wrap my current formula. The way this works is I go just behind that equal sign, and I type the word round, R-O-U-N-D, and then open parentheses. The formula then becomes the number, which is the first argument for this formula. Go to the end of the formula, type, type a comma, and now I want the number of digits to be rounded. In this case, I want two decimals. Now I could use three or six, but I'm going to use two for this example. Close parentheses and return. Now all of the, the proportions will always be two decimals. And all I need to do is to grab this cell, and you see my cursor turns into a small black plus sign, drag it over, and then drag it down. And I've now copied that formula for every single cell in this table above. I've created proportions, and these are the proportions that I'm going to use as I make uh, evaluations or inferences about my contingency table. If you want to know how to use these proportions, I have another video, which is one of my class lectures, that explains using this same data set and how we can make, purport, make inferences about uh, the likelihood of a dog being show quality, given that that dog is female. We're gonna be able to answer those questions using this contingency table, which we have created, in Microsoft Excel.